We're up to part six of our conversation with former Dire Straits guitarist and co-founder David Knopfler. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. David Knopfler is the younger brother of Mark Knopfler, who's well known as being the leader of Dire Straits, but it wasn't always that way. In the beginning of their career, both of them were writing songs for the band. By the time their debut album came out in 1978, it was all Mark Knopfler. And with that combination in the band, well, David Knopfler left after the making of their third album. Remember, Dire Straits 78, Communicate 79, and Making Movies was in the process of being made when David had to leave. Here's our conversation. Someone says, oh, stick to your music. Well, like, well, how come a dentist could talk about politics, but you can't? One in a thousand, one in a thousand people will do that to me. And they're usually kind of IQ of 84, you know? I mean, why worry? I mean, if, if there are some people that really have this idea that if, if, if you're a musician, you must have left school at 14 and a half and that you know nothing. I've got a degree in economics, you know? And I, I see no reason <laughs> to pretend I'm stupid because... I'm in the wrong business. It's absolutely ridiculous, you know. Uh, yeah, you use what you have, what informs you. And I'm, I've been reading books and, and um, anyway, I'll, I'll switch to the most culture, the culture channels on television every time over, over the trash. So that makes me what it makes me. It's who I really am. And it means obviously that I'm only reaching a small segment of, of the so-called marketplace, but who cares? I, you know, I haven't seen James Bond movies. I'll live. You know, it doesn't bother me that I haven't seen them. I don't feel any great sense of loss. Let's say you're at the dentist's office. Yeah. And someone turns around, the guy turns around and says, so what do you do? What do you, what do you tell that guy? Um, it depends who's asking me. Just a stranger. He's just a stranger. A stranger, I'll usually lie and, and, and deny anything. Why? Why? Because of the follow-up question? Do I know anything? Yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, it's just easier to lie. <laughs> <laughs> to deal with it. Um, I don't know. I don't lie so much as just evade. Um, but but doesn't the energy change when someone, when, if yes. you were to say, I was in dire straits, all of a sudden... It all changes, of course. You said you have a new album coming out. What's the, what's the, like, when? As soon as I get it together. I, um, I, I've, I've stopped fixing deadlines now because it, it, it starts to become problematic if you set a deadline and then you can't realize it. I, I now have patrons with a Patreon account, so they pay me generously every month to make my work. And so it comes out as it comes out. And I will play them the tracks as I'm working on them. Anyway, they'll hear them in progress and then they'll hear them finished and so on and so forth. So by the time the album's made, they've already heard most of it or a lot of it. it you know, the artwork can take months sometimes. You, know, you can't, you just can't... Uh, you can't predict how long something's going to take to be finished. Um, I don't want to go to ridiculous extremes. I, mean, I remember working at Real World and Peter Gabriel's studio. And Peter was working with some fantastic musicians. And I would have given my hind teeth to have backing tracks as good as the ones I was hearing coming out of his studio as we were going to lunch, you know. I could hear it just this, you know, Tony Levin and Manu on drums just everything sounded great. And it sounded like a finished record. And none of that appeared on the final record, you know. He spent another five years fiddling around with it. Danny Lamar, who Danny had left long ago and gave up waiting for it to be finished, you know. Producer, wonderful producer. So I don't go to those lengths, but um, you've got to know when something's good enough and let it go and move on. Let, let, you know, let it, let, it, let it be done and move on. But you do spend ridiculous amounts of time, you know, fiddling about. I can, I can go on fiddling too much almost, you know, things that you get to the point where you have 75 mixes that you've done over months. And if you didn't have the numbers to tell you which is which and when they were, when they were mixed, you'd be hard pressed to tell any difference between them. What was all that for? You know, you'll yeah. sweat for five hours just fixing one note that's just nuances. slightly out of time. Yeah, nuances. And bugging yeah. Yeah. But you get so close to the work. Like, you, you know, if, if you're a painter and decorator, it's the same thing. You know, you're painting your house, you're decorating it, and that one little spot that you never noticed before is now really bugging you because you didn't, you didn't give it a second coat, and that little bit that should have had a second coat. It's the same thing. You just get too close to the work, and so you're always trying to polish it, and you're always trying to improve it. The tracks can go down in 10 minutes. 
you're on the piano, you've played it, you've performed it. Sometimes it's a live vocal and a live piano and it's gone down and you're only on, you've used up three or four tracks. And then you might use another three or four just repairing that one note that's not quite what you wanted it to be. Or oh, one vocal line and you've, you've got the other line still whispering beneath it. You just want to, I mean, I could talk about this all day, you know, I mean, it's, it, you can fiddle about a long time. And, and you do make incremental, usually make incremental improvements, but you've got to know when to, when to say, you know, that's enough. 